Coming up on this Friday edition of Locked On Grizzlies, I will be discussing my top storyline to watch for the Memphis Grizzlies entering the final games of the 2023-2024 campaign, plus a couple of players to keep an eye on, a close eye on, as the season progresses and finishes up, and a preview of Grizzlies Clippers tonight. It's the end of the week, it's Friday, it's Locked On Grizzlies, lock in with me. You are Locked On Grizzlies, your daily Memphis Grizzlies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We've had to wait a long time, it seems, for Memphis Grizzlies basketball. It's only been about a week or so, maybe give or take a day. But we are back and better than ever in terms of the Grizzlies getting a chance to play again. Maybe not better than ever. That might have been a bit of hyperbole. But what can I say? I'm excited that Memphis is back in action tonight. And I'm excited that you, dear listener, dear viewer, have joined me on this episode of Locked On Grizzlies. This episode of Locked On Grizzlies is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn is phenomenal. It helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. We are free and available here at Locked On Grizzlies as proud members of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day, wherever you get podcasts. That's Apple, that's Spotify, Amazon, literally anywhere you get a podcast. You can find Locked On Grizzlies. You can also check us out over on YouTube. Like, comment, rate, review, subscribe. Hopefully at this point you are an everydayer checking out Locked On Grizzlies every time a new episode drops. If you haven't reached that status yet, smash that subscribe button. Make us a part of your NBA content consumption each and every time we drop an episode. No to Michael Cole. On this episode of the Commercial Appeal, they're in Memphis, Tennessee. He's the Memphis Grizzlies beat writer for that publication. Life happens, right? I want to stress that. Every once in a while, something comes up, need to get stuff done. The Michael's okay. He'll be fine. Should be back on our Monday edition of the show. But you have me going solo, talking with you to wrap up our week here on Lockdown Grizzlies. And there's a lot to discuss, a lot of things maybe not to be excited about because we've definitely entered the trudge portion of the season. Memphis. Not going to make the playoffs, not even going to make the play-in. There's not really that big of a chance of that happening. Them becoming mathematically eliminated from that may happen here in the next couple of weeks or so, right? Depending on how things shake out above them. But there are still things to look out for, still players to watch closely, stories to keep an eye on. And that's where we're going to start off this episode, talking about the idea of the storyline, right? The item of business to keep a close watch over as the season comes to its inevitable conclusion here in approximately six or seven weeks. And that story for me is health. And that sounds like a, a, a bit of a, a stupid, it's the economy statement, right? Obvious, Captain Obvious over here talking about health, but it's health for multiple reasons, right? And involves multiple players. The first and to me most relevant piece of health information belongs to the progress of Brandon Clark. I know we had a commenter on YouTube ask us about uh, giving a Brandon Clark report and update. Taylor Jenkins in practice on Thursday didn't give too much of substance. There's Bain and Smart injury reports that are scheduled to come out. Official updates here in the coming day or two it might be uh, available as of this recording, as of you checking out this recording. But as of this moment, we're still waiting to hear what the official updates on Marcus Smart and Desmond Bain might be. Brandon Clark was mentioned a little bit more extensively. He hasn't graduated to contact drills yet or anything of that ilk. But we have seen Brandon Clark dunking in Turks and Caicos while on all-star break vacation with Jaron Jackson Jr. We have seen him doing more in terms of pre-game activities before the Grizzlies actually take the floor in contest. I'm sure that'll continue Tonight against the Clippers, and we'll talk more about that game towards the end of the show. But the health of Brandon Clark is substantial, in my opinion, and how he gets back on the floor this season. Because we'll talk more about Bain and Smart in a moment, and whether or not we need to see them again, or if we just want to see them again on the floor. When it comes to Brandon Clark, I need to see him on the floor. 
I need to see him for at least 10 games or so, testing out that over a month by that time, or over a year, excuse me, roughly, time frame of the Achilles recovery. You want to see that guy out there running, jumping, doing all the things that Brandon Clark was close to being able to do without pushing it, without, you know, it's certainly not worth rushing into at this stage. But if the doctors and the medical team come to Taylor Jenkins and Zach Kleiman and say, he can play, he needs to play. And he needs to work up to a 20 to 25 minute a night look. Because we need to know, I need to know. I don't want to speak for you, dear listener, dear viewer. But for me, I need to see it, right? The Michael likes to poke and prod at me about the, the my doubts of me- modern medical science. It's not that I don't believe that his Achilles is properly repaired. I believe it is. But as I've said time and time again, my worry is that he has so much of his game, his leap ability, his ability to leap and then leap again, almost instantaneously, one of the most explosive basketball players in the NBA plus the fact of his versatility defensively, his movement laterally. Is he going to be able to do the things that this team needs him to do for him to be a key rotation player on a championship caliber team? That's what I need to see. I need to see that. And it's not going to happen tonight, and it's not going to happen probably in the next couple of weeks, but middle of March, two or three weeks left in the season, I have to see, for me personally, the health of Brandon Clark. Because it dictates a lot of what you do in the draft, dictates a lot of what moves you make in free agency, anything you do via trade, mid-level exception. All of those things that we're going to discuss over and over again here on Lockdown Grizzlies as the summer approaches, Brandon Clark's well-being, first and foremost, just for his general health, obviously. But in the macro sense, basketball-wise, What he is and isn't capable of doing directly impacts their to-do list this summer. On a lesser scale, Desmond Bain, Marcus Smart. Notice that Jake LaRavia is not being mentioned. He's going to be returning for the the Clippers game tonight. I'll talk more about LaRavia later. But Bain and Smart, the, the difference between need and want shines here. I need to see Clark again because we haven't seen him in so long. I need to see him. I want to see Bain and Smart. If this medical update comes out and they say that those guys are done for the season, I get it, man. I truly do. I don't know that that's what they're going to do because tanking this season doesn't make sense. DeMichael and I have talked numerous times about that. It's unlikely you get anywhere close to the bottom four teams, and that's where the, the bread gets buttered, so to speak, in terms of the lottery nowadays. You might as well play out the slate. And with Vince Williams Jr. and Gigi Jackson in particular, assuming that Clark plays due to my need to see BC back out on the floor, I want to see Smart. I want to see Bain alongside Gigi Jackson, Vince Williams Jr. Because it gets them closer to what their ideal role should be. Should Vince Williams Jr. be the second best player on a basketball team in the NBA that is trying to compete? No. I'll answer that question for you. It wasn't rhetorical. No, he should not be. Could Vince Williams Jr. be a starter or important rotation player? Yeah. And he's closer to that role as Smart and Bain return. Gigi Jackson, ideally, given his youth and skill set, his growth progressions, makes the most sense as a sixth man right now. Doesn't mean that he doesn't play 25 minutes a night, but it does mean that's what's best for him in terms of maximizing his offensive output while minimizing whatever defensive liability is still there, even though he is improving in that area, admittedly, probably in part because he's not defending the second best scorer on the team every night for the opponent. Gigi Jackson gets closer to the role he's supposed to be in if Bain and Smart return. Derrick Rose is going to be in and out of the lineup. I'm not counting on Derrick Rose any longer, and neither should you. I want to see Bain. I want to see Smart. I need to see Clark. The health of all three is the main storyline moving forward because it will directly determine how competitive the Grizzlies are. It will directly determine where they wind up in the conference and the lottery standings. If all three of those dudes play, Memphis is going to win some games. If all three of them don't or if Jess Clark plays, it's probably going to be more of the same. 
But Memphis desperately needs to see Brandon Clark out there doing things that Brandon Clark has done in the past, and they should want to see Smart and Bain alongside them as well. So health, that's the main storyline for me going into the remainder of the season. What about you? Hit me up Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think. When we come back here on Locked on Grizzlies, we're going to be talking the realities of the roster and a couple of guys to keep a close eye on. Not stories per se, but particular players as this season comes to a close. We'll talk about that next here on Locked on Grizzlies. But first, this episode of Locked on Grizzlies is brought to you by Stitch Fix. I am a big fan of Stitch Fix. You know that instant confidence boost you get from an outfit that makes you look really good. That's what I get with Stitch Fix. You can easily upgrade your wardrobe this year with a professional stylist that helps you find new on-trend favorites that will work for you. Stitch Fix makes it all so easy. If you don't like to shop, they can save you time and effort on that front. Plus, you get outfits that make you look good and feel really good. If you don't love something, you can just send it back with Stitch Fix. Shipping, returns, and exchanges are always free. It is that simple with the good folks over at Stitch Fix. Style that makes you feel as good as you look. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash locked on. That's stitchfix.com slash locked on. Stitchfix.com slash locked on. When we come back here on Locked On Grizzlies, continuing our conversation about uh, players to watch as the season progresses as opposed to stories. Stick with us. Welcome back to Locked On Grizzlies. I'm Joe Mullinax, flying solo on this episode. No to Michael Cole of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Tennessee, Memphis Grizzlies beat writer for that publication. But you've got me. I've been covering the Grizzlies since 2012 or so. Been doing this for a long time here, there, and everywhere. Thank you so much for joining me and DeMichael when DeMichael was with us, DeMichael by himself, myself, alone, whatever the case might be, each and every time an episode drops, thanks for being with us here on Lockdown Grizzlies. And again, continue to make it interactive. Who? What is your storyline to watch the remainder of the season like we talked about earlier in the program? By all means, let me know in the comments on uh, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Same thing with what we're about to talk about in terms of players. Because I listed Desmond Bain and Marcus Smart and Brandon Clark. I'm not going to talk about those guys because they're kind of obvious in this way. But I am interested in two players in particular trying to gauge where their future is with this organization. All right. And they're two guys lower on the totem pole, not necessarily the most important pieces of the Grizzlies machine, say to, safe to say, but that doesn't diminish their impact this coming season. One of them is Jake LaRavia. And that is because we simply have not seen very much of Jake LaRavia. His minutes have been limited at the NBA level. He's played a lot more G League basketball, not as much NBA basketball. And he certainly has not shown the flashes of contribution that Zaire Williams has shown, especially when John Morant is healthy. And for me, while I would welcome any trade involving Zaire Williams because I think that it's time to just cut bait and move on, I understand if they don't, because he's a bigger wing, Zaire Williams is, and he has shown in the past to be a productive player when John Morant's on the floor. And you have to assume that John Morant's eventually going to be on the floor. Otherwise, what are we doing here, folks? John Morant's going to have to play at some point, and when he does, Zaire Williams gets maximized. He runs well in transition, finishes well at the rim off of alley-oops. His offensive rhythm just seems more intertwined and intermingled with Jaws' game as opposed to anybody else on the roster. Shouldn't be surprising, right? That's the case for a lot of these guys. But it really shines with Zaire. And Zaire is somebody who, again, has a frame and a skill set that makes sense, plus the investment in the political understanding of being a lottery pick. So while I could easily see him getting moved, what Zaire does is more interconnected with Jaws. So while you want to see growth without Morant, because he can't always play with Jaw, you at least know that Williams has that capacity in him at times to show those flashes, especially with Morant on the floor. You have not seen that at all at the NBA level with Jake LaRavia, and you have to make a choice. You have to make a decision because LaRavia is going to make um, an amount of money, roughly $5 million or so, $6 million or so. In any sort of trade that can match with another salary, you attach a first-round pick to it, maybe even this upcoming first-round pick, depending on where it falls in the lottery, to make an upgrade, to get a starting center, whatever the case might be. That's possible. That can be money-matching magic. LaRavia fits that boat. 
And LaRavia is a guy who, if you move on from him, it's not like it's the end of the world for the Grizzlies because they haven't ever really had him. Again, Zaire, you've had his production. It's been inconsistent, extremely inconsistent. I want to stress that. But you can't miss something that you've never had. And LaRavia has been that much of a disappointment, more so than Roddy, who is now with the Phoenix Suns, more so than Williams. LaRavia, in part, no fault of his own. Health is not, I'm, I'm sure he'd rather be playing than be dealing with all these injuries. But the fact of the matter is, one of the greatest abilities in this life is availability. And Jake LaRavia simply hasn't had it. So this is a very important stretch starting with tonight's game, right? Taylor Jenkins said at practice on Thursday, LaRavia is going to be cleared. He's going to be active. How many minutes he gets, what his role is going to be, that's still kind of up in the air. But he is eligible to play. Maybe he's a DNPCD, and that answers our question for us. When you don't play coach's decision, things get dicey. But I would imagine we'll see LaRavia again. they got to get some data on this guy. Can he help? Another player that they need more data on is Trey Jemison, two-way contract player. And as DeMichael talked about on a recent episode, I think he's only got 16 games that he's able to play out of the remaining 26. So you're not going to see him over and over and over again, right? A uh, little bit more than half of the remaining contests. And I would imagine that will slightly coincide with Brandon Clark's eventual return. Jamison fades out, Jamison fades out, Clark fades in, right? There will probably be a progression there. But in the games remaining for Trey, I want to see what he does as a big. I want to see him develop as a defender. Because he's a two-way big that, you know, he had other opportunities in the NBA in the past. This is his chance with Memphis, and they upgrade him to that two-way off of the 10-day contract. Good for him. And if there's a place on this roster where there's a pretty glaring need right now, it's the center position. So you should be excited that a 6'11 guy with a pretty impressive frame is on the roster getting a chance to play if you're a Grizzlies fan. And I'm not even worried about his offensive capabilities because that's not why he's here, right? You're not on a two-way contract expecting the guy to come in and be a two-way dynamo. His body, his screening, hopefully, his rebounding, his defense, that is why Jemison is here, and that is something that you want to see consistently from him as a big in this rotation. Because if he's a two-way contract, again, you're not necessarily counting on him next season. But if he could shine and do similar things, not even on the level of Vince Williams Jr. or Gigi Jackson, but just enough to display that he's worthy of a three- or four-year contract similar to them to be an end-of-bench big, a fifth or sixth big. Xavier Tillman ain't walking through that door. So you've got Jaron Jackson Jr., You've got Brandon Clark. You've got Santi Aldama. Who's the fourth big? Who's the legitimate six foot 11, seven footer that is your rebounding tower of power in the middle? He doesn't exist on the roster right now. Jemison is the closest thing you've got. So if he could show that elite potential at a, as a rim protector, if he could display similar screen setting to what Steven Adams gave because. He's so good at being big, Steven Adams, that is. If Jemison can channel that, if we can see flashes of defense rebounding and being an effective offensive screener, for me, that would be enough. Because you could sign him to one of those lower-level contracts and have him be a break glass in case of emergency big that is familiar with your system, that has the size to provide something that you need. He has to stay on the floor and stay out of foul trouble. And he can't be a complete offensive liability. Again, I don't need him to be Jaron Jackson Jr. taking dudes off the dribble. I don't need him to be a three-level scorer like Santi Aldama has displayed the ability to be. I don't need him to be an above-the-rim finisher on the pick and roll like Brandon Clark. None of those things are prerequisites for him to achieve what I'm looking for. Be the guy that we hope you are. Show growth and progression towards that realization. And if that's the case, welcome to Memphis, big guy. That's what I want to see because that's a glaring need. And you're probably not going to fix it the way that you want to fix it between the draft, free agency, and trades. It's just reality. It takes two to tango in two-thirds of those situations in terms of trades and negotiations in free agency. So I'm thinking I want to see what Trey Jemison does, and I want to see what Jake LaRavia does. Those are my two guys that I'm most interested in in the remainder of the season. Obviously, you could talk GG and you could talk Vince Williams Jr. Lots of other options, and maybe you can provide them in the comments.
But those are my two. What about you? When we come back here on Lockdown Grizzlies, we're going to finish out this episode previewing Grizzlies Clippers, some keys to the game, things that I'm looking for, all that fun stuff coming up here on Lockdown Grizzlies. But first, I want to remind you that Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Lockdown Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Lockdown Sports Today now, available on uh, Fire TV channels app for free. Can't beat for free, that's for sure. This episode of Locked On Grizzlies is brought to you by eBay Motors. Oh, this is my favorite time of the week. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Basketball host Josh Lloyd to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. Whether you're prepping for a daily draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So let's see who Josh has picked out for us on this week's eBay Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. Keontae George is an interesting selection. The Grizzlies have talked in the past or fluctuated in the past, saying maybe the Jazz are the team that will fall out of the play-in mix. That still might happen, but not if Keontae George has anything to say about it. He's now Utah's starting point guard, replacing Chris Dunn once again. He has efficiency issues, but the Jazz should allow him plenty of opportunities, since if they make the play-in cool, if they don't, also cool. Josh Lloyd from Locked On Fantasy Basketball is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. It's the same thing with your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one car, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, roof racks, bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, it's guaranteed to fit your car the first time every time, or your money back. At these prices, you're worried about burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride-or-die whip alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to United States customers, eligible items only, exclusions apply. The Grizzlies take on the good old rival Los Angeles Clippers. And I realize that rivalry's dead, right? There's no more grit and grind versus Lob City, but it's still real to me, darn it right, to paraphrase uh, the great pro wrestling fan. It's still real to me. I still see a rivalry there, even though I'm sure the players don't connect to it. I can't help but look at those Clippers colors and think Nick Young draining threes in the course of a storming comeback in a game one playoff series. I can't help but reflect on Gilbert Arenas and Hamed Haddadi being the starting lineup for a game seven against that same Clippers team in FedEx Forum. I was there for both of those things. Back in my day, right? I remember that. Maybe you do too. Let me know in the comments. The Clippers will always be perceived as a rival to me. So whenever Los Angeles makes it to FedEx Forum, I get those goosebumps, those feelings, that that great memory of Zach Randolph skipping off the court after being ejected in that game six where they clinched the series and eliminated the Clippers. One of my favorite Memphis memories is sitting on the uh, the roof of an establishment, an establishment there in Memphis right there on downtown Memphis Beale Street and watching the people enjoy themselves after the victory with friends. I can close my eyes and I'm there. So I always look forward to Grizzlies Clippers. It's one of my favorite games every time they play. In this particular instance, the ball is going to get tipped and then I'm probably not going to be as excited because the Clippers are much better than the Grizzlies. Los Angeles is a contender for the NBA championship. Memphis is most certainly not. However, the Clippers are playing on the second game of a back-to-back. That is important to understand. And that could be something that enables the Grizzlies to perhaps be a little bit more competitive in the game than they should be. The Clippers had a pretty big game against the Thunder, right? Another team that views themselves as a Western Conference contender this season. That game was probably higher up on the list for Los Angeles than the second night of a back-to-back against the Grizzlies to come out of the All-Star break. But the Clippers are always one of those teams with load management. Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, are these guys going to play? James Harden, obviously, in that mix as well. What are they going to do in terms of their health, in terms of managing the second night of a back-to-back? That is something to keep an eye on with these Clippers and uh, to, to look out for as the game approaches, just who is actually going to play. Somebody might get a night off already coming out of that all-star break. Quick side note, 
playing a back-to-back straight out of the All-Star break is pretty rough, right? You got to feel for Los Angeles in that particular instance. And what if the, the health wasn't the concern, right? What if Memphis was at full strength and the Thunder were still as good as they are this season? You've got the Thunder and the Grizzlies back-to-back starting your post-All-Star slate. That would have been extremely challenging. Obviously, that is not the case here. Um, Jaron Jackson Jr.'s ability to create for himself, create for others, that has been a focal point of mine all season long, and I want to continue to see him grow in that particular way because that is a tangible improvement that's going to make the offense better next season when the entire team's back together. If he's able to dish to an open shooter, create for those guys, that's extremely helpful. Luke Kennard has been a topic of conversation, not just for me, but from others. I want to see him not just make threes. I want to see him get open. And that sounds dumb. Joe, if he's making threes, he's probably open. I want to see him get open on his own. And the Clippers bring interesting defensive matchups and possibilities, different types of closeouts, different levels of physicality in terms of defending the perimeter. Kennard struggles with that. That is not his forte. That's not his strength. Can he find a way to get open against these higher-level defenders of Los Angeles, assuming they play? That is something to keep an eye on because, again, Kennard has a team option on his contract. Kennard makes sense as a tradable piece this summer. If Memphis goes that route, they're passing on one of the best three-point shooters in the history of the NBA, and the Grizzlies struggle with three-point shooting. But the critique of him not being able to get his shot consistently, especially against a team like the Clippers, who, spoiler alert, they're not going anywhere, right? The Clippers are going to be good for a while. So even if the Grizzlies are a contender again next year, they're going to have to go through Los Angeles at some point. And if Kennard cannot get open against these dudes, then what's the point of having him? What's the point of being an elite three-point shooter if you can't get your shot off? That's a fair criticism, and I think that's a fair thing to keep an eye on. You can't judge him completely on one game because there is no John Morant. There is no Desmond Bain, no Marcus Smart. The floor would be a little more open if this team was healthy. But it would be good to see him create off the dribble, find ways to get off of screens, and not let that length and athleticism bother him so much, Just keeping an eye on Kennard in that way. And then finally, Gigi Jackson, Zaire Williams, the youthful exuberance that they showed before the All-Star break, it was beautiful. You want to continue to see that energy and that joy for playing the game. This can get ugly pretty quick if you're the Memphis Grizzlies. It's not like they're a lock to win any game that remains, especially as these guys stay out. Bain stays out. Smart stays out. Clark stays out. The sooner they come back, the better in terms of competitive basketball. And Memphis has obviously proven that they can compete with anybody, even in their current state. That's a kudos to the players, and that's a credit to Taylor Jenkins and his staff. They are not lying down, but the Clippers are so good that they can run the Grizzlies off the court. And Memphis doesn't have another game until Monday night. So it would be a long time to have to sit and kind of stew over what exactly occurred to them if they weren't able to compete in this particular contest. You want that youthful energy to be maintained. You don't want it to be squashed by the violence that is veteran presence and superior talent that the Clippers currently have. So finding the joy, getting some transition buckets, getting Gigi Jackson some open looks, letting him create off the dribble and get to the rim, looking for keeping those guys engaged. Vince Williams Jr. is going to stay engaged because that's just, he's kind of a blunt force object at this point. He enforces and engages the game on his own. But Zaire Williams needs a little bit more of a hand at this stage. I think Gigi Jackson, to a lesser extent, He has a greater offensive skill set, I think it's fair to say. But you got to remember Gigi's maturity. He's still young. Making sure that those guys stay in the fight, stay in the mix. So keeping Zaire and Gigi involved, getting Luke open and himself getting himself open, and then Jaron continuing to be that secondary creator of offense off the bounce for himself. That's what I'm looking for against the Clippers. Again, win or lose, the Grizzlies should lose, even the second night of a back-to-back. Memphis should lose. Doesn't mean they will, but they should. The focus is on development and how these guys continue to progress from now to the end of the season. And those are the things I'm looking for in this contest. Let me know what you're looking for in the comments below. Thank you so much for checking us out on this episode of Locked On Grizzlies and all week here on Locked On Grizzlies. Remember to check out Locked On Sports Today, first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Make sure you're liking, commenting, rating, reviewing, subscribing. 
all of those fun things on YouTube as well as over on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you're smashing that subscribe button and continue to make us a part of your Memphis Grizzlies content and NBA content experience. Next time we're here with you, we'll be on Monday. DeMichael should be back with us. We'll have a basketball game to discuss and the Clippers and how things went. We'll have maybe another practice since they have a couple of days off over the weekend to get some feedback in terms of injuries. Hopefully we have Bain and Smart updates by then if we haven't already received them. And we have a game to preview on Monday night as well. Back into our regularly scheduled content in terms of contests. I'm excited for that. I know you are as well. Thank you so much for being with us one more time. Hopefully you are an everydayer at this stage. If not, subscribe, like, comment, rate, review. Let us know how we could do better. Let us know the things that you love about Locked On Grizzlies. DeMichael and I are so very appreciative. Until next time, have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy NBA basketball being back. Enjoy Grizzlies Clippers. We'll catch you on Monday here on Locked On Grizzlies.